George liked to say that he majored in economics and minored in baseball and everything else. Well, the Yale team made the NCAA College World Series in 1946 and 47. As captain of the team, he had the added thrill of meeting and accepting a gift from the great Babe Ruth. I attended many of the games, and I was very pregnant with George W. I sat in the extra-large chair they created for ex-president William Howard Taft when he taught at Yale. Well, Poppy was on the accelerated graduation course, like many of those on the GI Bill, and he graduated in two and a half years. Now what to do? Well, George had offers to work for two Wall Street firms, his dad's and a close friend of his father's, but George wanted to make it on his own. So he accepted a position with Dresser Industries, an oil equipment firm, and we headed to West Texas to start the first of many adventures in our lives. Affluent Rye, New York, to dusty Odessa, Texas. <laughs> But Barr was wholly unselfish, and very tolerant of my weaknesses, and I guess ready to follow any course I chose. I hit the proverbial jackpot. I was young and in love. I would have followed George anywhere. <laughs> Although one of the first living quarters we rented put me to the test, it was a duplex in which we shared a bathroom with a mother and daughter who lived next door, who had many gentlemen callers. Day and night, Mostly at night. <laughs> but my Yale education must have really paid off, though, as my boss told me that I was, quote, the best warehouse sweeper outer he had ever seen. You know, and then I began going out working the equipment on the fields, learning the mechanics and the difficulties of drilling for oil. Uh, next, I became a salesman. Well, I was supposed to be, didn't sell much. Then in 1949, they moved us to California, where we lived in four cities in one single year. It was in California that I learned of my parents' involvement with, in a freak automobile accident. Dad was driving. He noticed a cup of coffee getting ready to spill on my mother, so he reached over to grab it, lost control of the car, and crashed into a tree. Mom was killed, and Dad hospitalized. I could not attend the funeral as I was seven months pregnant and had recently suffered a, a miscarriage. But on December 20th, 1949, I delivered a beautiful little girl. We named her Pauline Robinson Bush after my mother. Now, originally, she was going to be named Pauline Pierce Bush until my mother stepped in and observed she'd probably go through life then known as Pee Pee Bush. <laughs> So we used Barr's mother's name, Robinson, and we called her Robin. Now the next few years saw a lot of changes in my life. Uh, 1950, they sent me back to Texas, this time to Midland. Later that year, I left Dresser Industries and started a new business with a neighbor, the Bush Overby Oil Development Company. Now we were not a drilling company. And what we did was we bought mineral rights from landowners, and then we arranged for others to explore for wells. In 1953, we merged with another company and we became Zapata Petroleum. Now we were drilling, and well, we took a chance. We put our entire investment in one single location. A year later, we had drilled 71 wells. 71 wells came in. A Zapata would eventually go 127 for 127. <laughs> We were truly putting down roots. We bought a beautiful new house. George became active in the community, he coached Little League, and taught Sunday school, just to name a few of his activities. He also became involved in politics, supporting Dwight Eisenhower for president in 1952, which also was the election that saw his father, Prescott Bush, become a United States Senator. Then in February of 1953, John Ellis Bush, or Jeb, was born, and life seemed almost too good to be true. Well, it was. Not long after Jeb's birth, I, I noticed a change in our beautiful Robin. 